So you're here to learn programming. Great. I'm super excited that you decided to learn C Sharp because that's my language of choice. I'm a full stack software engineer. My goal with this series is to get you up and running with C Sharp by creating a real world project. Now, whether you're learning this to prepare for college, work, or just as a hobby, I'm sure you'll get something out of it. In this episode, we're going to get started by showcasing the app, creating the project, setting the title and the foreground, greet the user, and request a four-digit PIN. So let's get started. If you need help, there will be a link to my Discord server in the description down below, so make sure to check that out. And if you want the full source code, it will be available on my Patreon, which you can find down there as well. Let's get started by creating a new project. This is going to be a console app dotnet core next we'll call this my atm machine now you can name it whatever you want i'm gonna go with this because it makes sense and hit create and there we go it should look something like this you might have different colors that's because i'm using a different theme that's not going to change anything i'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit i totally forgot to showcase the application so let's do that real quick this is what it's going to look like it's going to say hello user please enter your four digit pin you're going to enter a four digit pin Hit enter and it's going to greet you with some, you know, some, some options. Let's say I want to check the total on my account. I can hit three and enter. My total is $200. Now let's say I want to deposit some money. I'm going to hit one. Let's say I want to deposit like another $500. There we go. Thank you for depositing 500. And my total is now $700. And you can assume what the withdrawal does. It's going to withdraw money. Now that might look quite simple, but if you're a beginner, it might be a challenge, but it shouldn't be too hard. You're going to do this just fine. Right, so let's get started. Let's start off by changing the title of the console. In order to get the console up and running to begin with, you're going to hit F5 or the play button up here. As you can see, it currently says Microsoft Visual Studio Debug Console. We don't want that. We're going to change the console title by saying console.title equal and then we want to set it equal to quotation marks and within the quotation marks we want to actually put the title i'm going to type atm machine there we go now if you're not familiar with the quotation marks and the text inside it this is what's called a string we're going to use strings and variables all throughout the application now do I have that? We can click F5. It's not going to display the title just yet. That's because it switches over to the debug console. What we want to do is we actually want to type console.readkey and then we want to hit F5 again. There we go. Now it hasn't exited out of this application. So it should say ATM machine or whatever you put. Sets the title of the console. Perfect. Now let's set the foreground color or well, the text color of the application. We do so by typing console.foreground color equals console color and then dot to access the enum values i'm gonna put white as a default i'm gonna show you what it looks like so if i were to console right line a text here so like let's say hello world there we go it's gonna display the text as a white text the default text would actually be somewhat gray and you can change this to like green i know this is quite a popular color with some people i just prefer white so going back to white there we go can remove that line right there put a comment up here sets the text color of the console also known as the foreground color perfect now if we think about this logically when you go to an atm machine it's going to ask you to input a pin well first you need to insert the card we're going to skip that and head to the the pin part straight away so in order to print something to the console as you saw previously we do console.writeline a shorthand term for that would be cw and then tab tab so pressing tab twice that's called a code snippet so let's give it a string the string we're giving it is going to be hello user please enter your four digit pin now we can try running this by hitting f5 we can see this is hello user please enter your four digit pin now we need a way to capture what the user types back into the console we do so by using console.readline if we hover over read line, we can see that it says there's a description of the method saying reads the next line of characters from the standard input stream. The standard input stream is the stream that it gets from the console back to here. I'm trying to refrain from too many technical terms because this is a beginner series. But to sum up what this method does, it takes whatever you type into the actual console and returns that value. Now we want to store that value inside of a variable just in order to demonstrate how it works. So if I were to do this, hello, and I click enter, nothing's going to happen. However, if we take whatever we input and store it in a variable, string, let's call it input equals, and then 
it's going to be equal to read line, what read line returns. And what does it return? What we type in to the console, because it reads whatever we type into the console. All you need to know is that read line is going to read whatever you type into the console. We're assigning that value to the input variable of type string. Now, same thing again, if I type hello, nothing's gonna happen. Something did happen, we actually stored it in here, but we're not using that variable yet. So if we were to console write line, input is going to give us the value of input, which is now what? Exactly, whatever read line returns, which again is what the user inputs. So if I were to type hello, is going to write hello back, easy. Now we can go ahead and remove those two lines right there. And what we want to do now is we actually want to be able to capture the pin that the person is typing in. And we don't want to display it as like, you know, digits. We want to display it as those star characters in order to mask it. So in case someone were watching the screen, it's just a safety precaution, really. So we're going to create a method for that. Methods is something that you're going to encounter quite a lot. And they're absolutely amazing. It's a way of creating code blocks that can be reused through the entire application. I'm sure most of you already know what method are but just to you know recap on what they are now let's create a method underneath the static void main let's create a different method called uh, request pin so private static uh, return type of string request pin parentheses and followed by curly brackets now just to recap on what methods are it's a way of grouping code into code blocks so that they can be reused through the entire application they're amazing now we're going to store this in a string builder because we're actually going to build the star characters that's going to make sense in just a sec now let's create an instance of the string builder so string builder it's called sb equals new instance of the string builder perfect now let's also create a variable for the console key info so console key info, there we go. Let's call it key info. And now we want to do while loop. So do tab tab is going to generate the template for us. Key info is actually going to be equal to console dot read key. And we actually want to intercept the, um, the key that we type in. So we're going to feed it a parameter of true. That parameter would be the intercept parameter. This determines whether to display the press key in the console window. Tr setting it to true is going to tell it to not display the character. Otherwise, we'd set it to false. Now, let's check if the key that we press is a control key. So let's make an if statement by typing if tab tab char dot is control key. Well, is control parentheses. And we want to feed it the key info that key char and we want to check if it's not a control key so let's put an exclamation mark right before the char that's going to indicate checking for something that's false rather than true so if the key that we press is not a control key such as you know enter shift tab etc we want to append it to the string builder so string builder well sb dot append parentheses key info key char perfect and since we're not displaying the, the actual character we're typing, when we type a character, let's actually console.write. We want to write out the star character. We could actually try this out. So let's call the method up here inside the main function by typing request, the name of the method, obviously, parentheses, and then semicolon, hit F5. And now if we start typing stuff, we can see that it, it just, you know, types the star characters. Now we want to do this until a condition is met. We're actually going to type the condition inside the while loop. The condition is going to be key info dot key is not equal to console key dot enter. We want to do this while the key we're hitting is not enter. So until we hit enter, we want to do this. Now, once we actually hit the enter key, let's put some curly brackets underneath the while loop. We want to return the actual string that we got from the string builder. So return sb to string. That's going to return the actual string that we've appended to it. So since this returns a string and we're building the string using the string builder over here, let's store that inside of a variable. So let's create a string variable, call it pin equals request pin. Now, just to make sure that everything works, let's type out the pin as soon as you've entered it. So I'm just going to type your pin is plus and then pin. Perfect. Let's try this out. One, two, three, four. Your pin is one, two, three, four. Nice. We can go ahead and remove that right there. And that's pretty much it for this episode. We now know how to actually, you know, greet the user, how to enter a pin. And this is going to be a crucial part for the next episode, because we actually want to check whether the pin that we entered is the user's actual pin. Now we haven't defined the actual pin as a global variable, 
but we'll get to that in the next episode. If you have any questions or if you're curious about anything, if there's a part you didn't understand, then feel free to hop in the Discord and I'll do my best to explain what's going on in the code. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.